In this video, we are going to look at two players with injury clouds hanging over them. Those two players being Olivia Miles and Caroline Ducharme. They're, first, we'll, first, we'll take a look at Miles. Before I start, nobody likes injuries. They're obviously a part of the game. If you're offended by me speculating on their injuries and giving time frames, then don't watch the video. Click off now because I, I don't want to offend anybody. But it's, it's sort of a vacuum of information at times. And I, I think it's fair to just give some information on what I think will happen. But that being said, I don't have all the information. And I'm not really second-guessing either. Of, well, I'll probably second-guess UConn a little bit. But um, I, I, I admittedly concede I do not have all the facts. So first, let's, let's start with Olivia Miles and her knee injury. There seems to be a lot of speculation of if Olivia Miles will play or not play this season. And in a nutshell, I mean, I'm going to go through what I think, but in a nutshell, no, she is not going to play this season. There, There's no way in my mind. Um, crush me if you want in the comment section, but yeah, that that is my take. Um, it seems like everybody's playing the game of if she or won't she play, and in large part that's due to Miles being unwilling to reveal what the injury is was that she sustained to her knee. She was asked about the nature of her injury at the uh, preseason media day, and she said, I'm not quite comfortable giving the specifics yet, Miles said, but it's pretty major injury. It wasn't anything really, really serious, but it was pretty major. Now, she was further pressed on this by reporters who asked if it was an ACL injury to her knee, as that's what you would think it would be, and she would neither confirm nor deny if it was an ACL injury, which is her right. I mean, she doesn't have to say what it is. In terms of playing, now Miles has said the goal is to play this season, but I'm not going to rush it. She added the injury was major, but nothing really serious. So they're they're taking this line to it. So is an ACL injury and surgery major and serious? Or well, it's a major injury, but is it serious? Uh, you know, people have ACL repairs all the time. It takes time, but you can see how they're being cryptic there. They're they're not really clear on if she's going to play. And and Notre Dame sort of done this. Well, Miles has done this the whole way through. And Notre Dame obviously has supported her in this, which which they should. Notre Dame's coach Neil Ivy announced on the seventeenth of March, uh, twenty three, that um, Miles would be out. And Ivy gave this quote saying. At the time, they also announced that she was going to have surgery the following week. And, and Ivy said, the current timetable for her return is that we hope that she will be back for the summer in order to participate for workouts. And again, if you look at that, they're being clever with their words. We hope she'll be back. It's not saying that's the expected time frame or anything like that. And then Miles did an article or participated in an article that came out on the 30th of, of June, where she outlined that she was 11 months, or, or sorry, 11 weeks recovered from surgery, and that she was hoping to be cleared to run soon. So they knew she wasn't going to be back for summer. So it seems like they're just putting the best spin on this as possible. Then Ivy gave this quote during the preseason press saying, we're kind of day by day with her, Ivy said. We're kind of playing that by ear between communicating with Olivia and our performance staff. Um, now, I've taken this from the next one. Mile was pressed about if she played this year. Ivy said, I'm not sure. It's completely up to her comfort level. She's obviously fully healed and did a great job with her rehab. She's strengthening right now and working on the mechanics of running again and just being on the court and moving around more. So it's completely an individual decision for her. And that's what the coach should say. That's quite appropriate, but there's no way. If she's just starting to run again, this is, it, it has to be an ACL injury. First, the mechanism of injury, when she did it against Louisville, she came down awkwardly on her knee, crumpled to the floor. She had full range of motion in her knee, like she's bending it, but she's in pain, obviously. Um, that tells me I don't think it was like a torn meniscus or anything because usually with a torn meniscus, you get jamming and you can't move your knee. Uh, that's the only other possibility I could see that could put her out for this long. When she did that article, 
uh, in the 30th of June. She Again, she was 11 weeks removed from surgery, and they're contemplating running. That fits the profile for an ACL recon repair. So that's why I think it's an ACL recon repair. I, I just don't... The only other injury I could think it would be would be like a, a torn meniscus that they've gone in and stitched and trying to repair it um, to preserve the meniscus sometimes. But usually with that, you're, you're like in a straight leg brace for six to eight weeks and then it's a slow injury but not as slow as the acl if she's just running now this this has to be an acl injury in my opinion until it turns out i'm wrong but i the other thing i don't understand with an acl there have been athletes that have come back at nine months you can do that but with her she's a young college athlete there there's no way they're gonna have her come back 12 months i mean look at Paige becker she she wasn't cleared for contact until until 12 months after surgery. That's generally the timeline they will go with. If you're a pro athlete and really want to push it, then sure, you might be able to come back at eight or nine months if you really push it. But I just don't see them doing that with a college player and, and bringing her back. Like she'd be about 10 months, maybe just over that, uh, like in February. So they're going to bring her back in February for March Madness when everybody else has had the whole season and conditioning, it just doesn't make any sense. I just don't see it happening. And I think Notre Dame is prepared for this as they have the young recruit that they're bringing in, uh, Hidalgo, and, 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 and they, they've got a lot of depth in their backcourt. So I think they're well-placed to try to manage it and do the best they can. Obviously, Olivia Miles and the numbers she puts up is hard to replace but I think they're about as well placed as you could be to do that, almost like UConn when you know they had Mule be able to replace Beckers. I mean, that's that's pretty good to be able to to go to Mule to do that, and she set like the season assist record. So, and speaking of UConn, let's talk about Desharm and her head injuries. The only reason I want to speak on Desharm's injury is I don't think it's fair. To second guess. I think it's better, like the late John Madden used to say, I, I'll pre-guess and say, before the play is run, I don't think you should be going on it, uh, going for it on fourth down or say it. It's always easier afterwards if she suffers another head injury to say, ah, oh, she never should have been playing. So I want to get in before the season starts and say, I cannot believe Caroline Descharmes is going to play this season. Like I, I always thought when they came back from the European trip, that there would be like an announcement some stage saying, hey, we're going to redshirt her and give her more time just to give her the best possible chance. Now, the reason I think this is just, if you look at her history, every year she has suffered head injuries. And the question would be, what is going to change now? So um, Desharm, her first head injury was actually her freshman year in 21, 22 when she took a series of hits across multiple games, missed a total of four games. And then Gino Oriema came out and said, you know, after they lost in the Final Four, he basically said Caroline was never the same after those head injuries. We did the tests, and she didn't have concussions, but it was clear she wasn't the same. So you can say technically she did not have a concussion, but she had something going on with her head. And then she missed the start of the 2022-23 season with neck stiffness and issues. And then she took headshots um, to the head during multiple games. Like I, I think it was like uh, Creighton and Marquette. And then sustained another injury in practice and then was out in the concussion protocol for an extended period. So she didn't return. So that, that happened like in early January, and, and she did not come back until, like, I think they announced she was out on the 3rd of January, 23, and then she didn't return until the 15th of February. And then there was bad luck. She took a hard elbow after that on the 4th of March, so she took a bad elbow, and, and, and that's the problem with this is you can't control that. But she still played, but it was painful to watch her play at times during last season as she would have an ice pack on the back of her neck and would be wearing earplugs just because she was so sensitive because of the head injuries. In August, they came back for summer prior to going on the European tour 
and she was positive as she should have been saying you know she's in a better place been doing rehab for it, like neck strengthening exercises and that every day she felt like she was getting a little bit better but the problem that Desharm admitted was is that really the only thing you can do for a concussion is rest and it feels like you're not doing anything so it's really tough mentally but everybody was hoping the best and then she goes to Europe and she suffers two head injuries on the tour we don't know the extent of those so the first one was she got hit on on the head with a with the basketball um, UConn edited the tape so we don't know how it occurred or what it looked like or if it was a really big shot or not but we know she was removed from the court and they just announced she had a head injury and then and one of the she made it back again and played another game, but again, she sort of jostled with another player and appeared to take a headshot, but it was hard to see how impactful the headshot was, and and she left that game with a head injury, and, and nothing more was said about it, and we haven't had much information on it. She hasn't been in the preseason uh, like press availability, understandably, and. For me, by my count, I think that's like five head issues. And, and basically every time she plays, she gets a head injury issue because um, basketball is a physical game and that happens. And I, I, I guess it's sort of the um, Einstein quote of insanity. What What is going to change now where it's not going to happen? I mean, she's going to take a shot at some point to her head. And why do you think that she's going to be um, – more resilient when she takes it now than she was the last two seasons. That's that's the thing, and it just just worries me when you're dealing with somebody's head to to take that chance. I, I just don't. I, I'd feel more comfortable, or I, I and and again, I don't have all the evidence. They have more testing than me, and it's probably presumptuous of me to even suggest this. And I know I'll get crushed in the comments, but I, I just why take a chance? Why not? You know, she wants to play, I understand that, but why not redshirt her for a year and then have her come back next year? And and then you can say, hey, we've done everything we can. We we gave her seven months off, gave her the mo- most rest we could, and, and then if, if she takes another shot again and has a concussion, then you can say, man, we, we did everything we could and it, and it wasn't meant to be and we gave her the best chance versus if, if she goes out now that that'll be the question of man did, did did you rush this and give her the best chance to fully recover um again i i, I know i'll be crushed by probably yukon fans on this but that's my two cents on this disagree with me if you like but i thought it was better to get that out there prior to the season start versus you know be one of those that comes in uh, after if, if something does happen and I hope it doesn't I hope I get crushed you know I hope we're watching this at the end of the year and everybody's saying how ridiculous this take I had was you know Desharm was fine all season she was double digit score and rebounder and she was great and you look like a fool if that happens hell I'm happy with that as well I'm happy to be the idiot god how many times have I been an idiot on YouTube so I hope that happens but I would rather do that and put it out there than come in after she, if something happens, which I hope it doesn't, but if something happens and then coming in, how could they do this? You know, it's so easy to second guess after the injury. Anyway, your thoughts and comments uh, are welcome. Do you think that, uh, you know, one is, do you think Olivia Miles has an ACL injury? And two, do you think she'll play this season? Or do you think like me, there's no way in hell she'll play this season? Uh, to Desharm, do you think she should have been redshirted? Do you think she should be playing this season? And uh, you know, uh, you know, you can, I'm a jerk for suggesting she shouldn't be playing based on the lack of information I have. That's fine by me if you want to put that. Your poison is always welcome. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Have a good night.